Hi, this is Irv Shapiro with Make With Tech. Make With Tech, formerly the Dr. Vax channel, is a place where I teach people how to use inexpensive home-based technology to make things, to innovate, to create things, because I believe everyone can be a creator, a maker. Today, we're going to talk about 10 tools and supplies I've learned about over the last three years that will make it much easier for you to use your 3D printer, specifically your filament-based or FDM 3D printer. So if you wanna learn how to get more from your 3D printer, stay tuned and let's learn something together. As always, these videos are always free to watch and to share. So feel free to share them on Facebook pages, in discussion groups, via email, with friends and colleagues that you think might benefit from them. So laid out on the desk here, I have 10 items, actually a bit more, because there are a couple extra things I wanna talk about that I have found over the last three years are extremely useful in making it easier for me to succeed in 3D printing, specifically 3D printing using filament-based FDM style 3D printers. I have 3D printers from five different manufacturers. I believe I have 12 or 13 different models of 3D printers at this point. So I've built up quite a bit of experience in this area. And from the thousands and thousands of comments I've received from viewers, I've selected 10 items I find specifically particularly useful. Let's start with a couple that aren't on the list. Every 3D printer comes with some supplies. Don't lose them, use them. So in general, you're going to need a scraper of some type often to get prints off the print bed. Even if you have a flexible print bed, this might be handy at some times. If your printer did not come with a diagonal cutter, go out and buy one. These are under $10 online. You absolutely need one. For cutting your filament at an angle in order to feed it into your extruder and for cleaning up your prints. Very often your printer will come with a wrench and you might wonder, why do I need that? When I assembled it, all I needed were these hex keys. Well, these wrenches are used to adjust nuts that are called eccentric nuts. They're nuts where the hole is off center and you use them to adjust all of the wheels that are used for your X and your Y carriage. So make sure you have those, don't lose those. Item number one, very simple. You need a metric ruler. Now, if you're outside the United States, you have lots of these. If you're in the United States, you need to get one. I really like having one that's 15 centimeters long, that's 150 millimeters, and is made of metal. I find this very useful for measuring the height of my X axis to the print bed to make sure it's the same on both sides that's perfectly level. I find this very useful for measuring prints to make sure my extrusion is correct. Pretty much everything you're going to do with your 3D printers from most manufacturers is going to be in the metric system. And that's very good. Well, let me give you a simple example. One and one third inches is one and five sixteenths. That's a hard number to remember. That's 33 millimeters. Instead of worried about sixteenths and thousandths and 30 seconds, all you have to do is remember millimeters and centimeters and meters. And it's easy to remember how they relate together. One centimeter is just 10 millimeters. And in general, a millimeter for most things you'll be doing, in particular at home, is the smallest measurement you really need to worry about. Now, item number two is a digital caliper. 
This will make it much easier for you to measure things where you want a precise measurement. I use this all the time when I'm modeling something in a computer-aided design program that I wanna reproduce on my 3D printer. Now, you can get a lot of digital calipers that have plastic in them for about, I don't know, $12, $15 online. And I have a number of those that I initially purchased. But I'll tell you what, this one right here from Kynup, K-Y-N-U-P, that you can also buy online for about $25, $30 is the one I like the best. It's heavier. It's made of all metal aluminum. That means when you move it, it moves very smoothly. Whereas these plastic ones, you know, sometimes it's a little bit harder to adjust them. The movements aren't quite as smooth. So I think it's worthwhile to spend a few dollars more on this all metal caliper. Item number three. Buy yourself a tube of Super Lube. Super Lube is a silicon PTFE lubricant. That means it has Teflon in it, or the same chemicals as Teflon. And this happens to be food safe. That means if you even used your 3D printer for printing cookie cutters, and you were using a food safe filament and you keep it clean, this wouldn't cause any problems. This sells for under $10. And it's the perfect lubricant for using on the side rails and the X axis and on the screw that's used very often for your Z axis. It works great um, and it's not too messy. Now, item number four. And this is the least expensive item I'm going to talk about. You need a popsicle stick. Now, if you have a grandchild, you can get one of these for free, probably. You can order a thousand of them online for just a few bucks. Why do you need a popsicle stick? Well, very often when you're starting a print, you print a purge line, a line on the side to start the filament flowing. And then your print head moves to where it's going to start your print. And often, depending on your start G-code, it may pause for a second. And the idea is to knock off any filament that's hanging from the nozzle perfect for that. It's soft wood. It won't damage the nozzle. You won't hurt your fingers. You really never want to use a tool like a needle nose pliers to try to pull filament off the end of a nozzle because you might damage it. So I love having a popsicle stick around. If you have a touch screen on your 3D printer, this also works great for touching that touch screen. Item number five. Get yourself a set of screwdriver style hex keys. So instead of using these things, I use these things. I find them just much easier to use, much more precise, and they're not very expensive. Uh, there are a variety of manufacturers that make these available. I'll have links for all of these things down below. They're about $12, $15. Next, item number six. Item number six looks like a soldering iron. Let me take a look at this here. I'll open this up. And in fact, it works just like a soldering iron. This is called a hot knife. This particular kit was sold for people doing wood burning. And I like this particular kit and I'll link examples down below because it has a temperature control. That's very important. You want to heat this up just hot enough to be able to cut through plastic without melting pieces around it or to level out a surface. And this particular kit has both blades. Here's a blade that you can screw in or it has other styles of tips that you can use to sort of iron down bumps on your print. So a hot knife is a unique way to clean up 3D prints. You can get these from anywhere from a dozen dollars to $50. Um, I generally spend about $25 for a hot knife that I think has an adjustable temperature control and the right number of 
tips for what I'm doing. Once again, I'll link this down below. Now, a quick note about the links that I'll be including. Um, the list of links are affiliate links. I do get a cut of the proceeds when you buy these anywhere from a couple percent to maybe eight or 10% or a little bit more, depending on the item. They help support the channel. Next, item number seven. These are little needles that you use to clean out a nozzle. I find the best way to clean out the nozzle on a 3D printer, in particular if you have a Bowden system, it's really easy to do, is you have the Bowden tube going into the hot end. You pull the Bowden tube out, and then with the hot end heated up but the power off, you take and you push this pin through. These little wires are available in different sizes for different size nozzles. I find it's a really easy way to clean out a nozzle. There are a variety of different kits. Um, this one from Reptor is the one that I like the most, um, but there are many different varieties available online. Next, paint scraper. Now, why do you need this paint scraper? Well, this is a razor blade paint scraper. That means the edge is very, very thin much thinner than this style of paint scraper. So I find, and you have to hold it very flat when you use it, but I find this is the easiest way to get prints that are stuck on a print sheet that is not flexible up. So I'll slide this under the corner to lift it a little bit, then I'll use a larger paint scraper to scrape it the rest of the way up. Um, this has saved many prints for me, and I think it saves my print surfaces because if you use it carefully, it won't damage the print surface at all. So an inexpensive, under $10 paint scraper. Now, I've tried out many fancy ones with fancy handles. I like the inexpensive metal or plastic ones best. Next, item number nine. Well, we all have to level the print beds. And often in many of the tutorials, they talk about using a sheet of paper. For a long time, I told people to use post-it notes. I found something even better. Go online and buy a, a package. I think this was $9. Um, I don't know even how many are in here. There are 10 in here of 0.2 millimeter plastic sheets that are used as stencil sheets. 0.2 millimeters. So 0.2 millimeters is a thick piece of paper. It's about the same as a post-it note. These are flexible. They're big enough to get into any printer. You can slide it under the print head without burning your fingers. And they're very inexpensive. Um, this is, I believe, one of the more valuable tools here because it just works so well. And then finally, Item number 10, well, item number 10 is not inexpensive, but it's gonna save you hours and hours of time. Why? Because if you start a print and it comes off of your print surface, the adhesion is not good because you have your height wrong, your print's gonna fail. And how can you give yourself a little more latitude? So even if you don't have it Perfect. Even if you've used your new 0.2 millimeter sheets, you can use Magigoo. Now, I've been talking about Magigoo for three years now. They're not a sponsor of this channel. I don't get any cut from them unless you buy it off an affiliate link. And I'll list an affiliate link actually to Amazon um, in the description. But this stuff works. Now, a lot of people have told me other things work, hairspray, regular glue sticks. I've tried them all. This is the most consistent for me. That's not to say other techniques don't work, but the basic message is I'm a strong believer in using a build plate adhesive in order to make your life easier. So this is, I don't know, about 20 bucks. This will last me, I do a lot of prints. This lasts me about six months. So is it worth a couple bucks a month, three bucks a month, four bucks a month in order to 
not have to start prints over after three, four, five, six hours? Absolutely. One of the tools that I really like, which in some ways is a little more advanced tool, and the first version I, I saw of this were from the people that sell the Ruby nozzles, is this torque mm -hmm. wrench for screwing in nozzles. What happens is when you're screwing in a nozzle with this wrench, it will stop, it'll start clicking, it'll stop turning when you get the torque to 1.5 Newton meters, which is the ideal tightness for a nozzle on your 3D printer. There are a variety of other manufacturers of these now, and you can get just a regular wrench, but this one will allow you to easily over tighten your nozzle. Well, folks, Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you subscribe to the channel, share the link, click on the bell so you're notified about future videos. If you want to talk about any of these items, I run a free discussion group called forum.makewithtech.com. Anyone can go there, and if you register, which just involves putting in your name and your email address, uh, you can post pictures, you can make comments, you can participate in discussions with lots of kind, understanding, helpful people. With that, let's continue to learn things together.